Hey guys, we're back. Let's uh, let's assemble some steppers. Well, stepper towers, stepper motors. X Y. I'm gonna get this all uh, assembled up here, and we're gonna need a pair of these. We'll need some of these. We're going to need some of these, and I'm trying to remember everything else we need in here. Oh, pins. Got to have the pins. Idlers. And I believe we're going to need these here. And then we're going to have to grab the uh, bearings out of here. Oh, forgot the uh, bearing spacers. So. And I know they're in here somewhere. Right here. They look like washers, but they're actually shims. And they're marked here on the box M5 10 by 1 shim, 23 of them. We'll set this out of the way. And we'll get started on this. So the very first thing we're going to want to do is grab two of these pins. And we're going to test fit everything to see if they have to be sanded. The original ones had to be sanded a little bit to fit. The new ones, I do believe they haven't worked out on them now where they do not need to be sanded anymore and it doesn't feel like they do. So, I'm going to show you how to assemble a bearing stack. Let's get four of the shims, four of the bearings. Now I'm going to show you the way I do it. If you look at that bearing, there's a kind of a rounded off side, and then there's a side that's got kind of sharp edges. I do mine so that the rounded side touches the bearing. So I'm going to drop that on there like that. I'm going to take a bearing, lay it side down, slide it down against it. The next bearing plane side up, slide it down, the shim with the smooth side towards the bearing down, another shim smooth side away from that one towards this bearing up, flange down, flange up, and finally the last shim on here like this. And I'm going to drop this on. Just like that. So that's your bearing stack for the right side. And then we have to do the next one is a single stack. So you have these pulleys here that have teeth. They actually go out here on the uh, Z or uh, X axis brackets. We're basically going to do the same thing here again. Just going to need two shims this time. So, shim with the shiny side or the smooth side towards the bearing, flange towards the shim. Ooh, this one doesn't want to go on real well. shaft just a little bit tight. So we're going to have to sand that one and I'll show you how here in just a minute after I knock that bearing back off there. Let's try another one. Now it's a little tight but it'll go. Nope, it's going to have to be sanded as well. Alright, this will be a good time to uh, 
show you how to sand these shafts. Okay, grab a cordless drill. Check it in so about a quarter of it's in the drill. Turn me off a little piece of sandpaper here. And this is uh, 150 grit, but the finer grit, the better it surface it'll leave. But and I just run it on there just a little bit. Check the fit of the bearing. Much better. Still got a little bit of friction, but it is sliding off and on there. So we'll spin the pen around. Grab about a quarter of it, just like that again. Wrap the sandpaper around there and just... Don't have to sand it very long. Not a lot of pressure. Just... Like that. Check the bearing fit. Much better. Okay, I'm not going to bore you here while I uh, check all the rest of these pins, but I'm going to check all the rest of these. And then we'll go back to assembling these bearing stacks after I clean up the mess because that does leave a terrible mess on the bench and all over your hands. Okay guys, we're back. Got the dowel pin sanded. So back to assembly. Shiny side towards the bearing. Flange towards the shinier smooth side. Next bearing, like that. And then, again, you can see this side's got kind of a sharp edge. This side's rounded off. I put the rounded off sides next to the bearing. And we'll take and set that stack into this pin right here. So that's your bearing stacks for the right side. And then to keep it from all coming apart while we're handling it here, we'll go ahead and slide it all together. And that's how it should look and then what we're going to want to do is go ahead and assemble our stepper motor onto there because that keeps it from uh, coming apart so you got your uh, 3 in 3 by 20s and one slips in here one in here and then one in this hole here so these three holes here Now the last thing to do is the pulley, which actually you can put that on before you uh, put that in there. But on the right hand side, the uh, belt that you're going to be, so actually this is the left hand. So on the left hand side, you want the base of the pulley up like that and the teeth down. Let's find the uh, flat spot on the shaft and now I adjust these after I get it on the printer and let the bearing or the belt find its center but basically you want this to line up with the two pulleys. This single pulley right here is just where a belt comes around the tower. These pulleys right here, the belt comes in around the teeth and then back out. So you want this more or less lined up with these two stacks here. 
and I'm just going to snug it for now. Because, like I say, once I actually get the belt path run, I'll run it back and forth a few times and let it find its center. So there you go. That's an assembled stepper tower. And I got the uh, <laughs> I got the uh, plug in for the uh, wires in the wrong spot. I need to turn this 90 degrees because I want it facing because this is going to be the front of the printer. The back I want it facing off of here so I'm going to knock these three loose and turn it a quarter turn. Now you don't have to crank them down super tight. Just get them good and tight. If you crank them too tight you take a chance of maybe splitting because that actually has a, a place in there that the screw comes up against and it, it holds all this together now. There we go. There is a completed left hand. Now we'll repeat the process for the right hand. Like I said, you don't need to get carried away with tightening those down. Now this one here, the pulley will go the opposite direction. It'll actually go with the teeth closer to the stepper motor. And same as before, kind of want that to line up with the double stack, or the double bearings. This right here is just an idler where a belt passes around this stepper. So just kind of get it lined up. And again, I just snug them up for now. Just more or less to hold them in place. And then once we actually assemble it onto the printer, we'll uh, get those figured or more adjusted. Now we'll do the front stepper towers. These are a little bit fiddly to do. And I'll show you why. For the front tensioner towers. Need four more of these flanged bearings. Four more of the uh, shims. So on this one here, the way this works is the pin goes through and you have to assemble everything as it goes through. So there's lots of different ways to do this. I actually have some the little tiny hemostats or if you were a child of the 70s, 80s, 60s. So I start by putting one of those on there. Kind of hold that with my finger. Get the next one or get the bearing set on there and just press it through enough that you can just barely see it poking through there. Get the next bearing in place and just kind of work it around as you put a little pressure on the pin until it starts to go and then stop. You don't want to push it all the way through because you still have to get a shim slipped into here. And there's not an easy way to do it. Um, I normally just bounce it around a little bit while I'm putting pressure on it. And there it went. There you go. There's one. There's got to be no oh, it's up here on top. Same thing again. Get our pin started. A shim. Up. Set the shim on there. Bearing with a flange towards the shim. And then another bearing with the flange opposite. And then kind of work it around while you put some pressure on the pin till it starts to uh, slide into the next bearing. I might have needed to sand that pin just a little bit more. There it finally went. Kind of look in there and make sure that the pin's not through the hole. It's 
slide our shim in there. And just like that, it's assembled. A lot of people look at these and they see this hole on the bottom here and they ask what that's for. So in the event that these are fit in there really super tight and you need to get them out of there, you can run an M3 screw in there and actually just push the, the uh, pin out. So that is it for the front towers, the stepper mounts, and next we're going to put the stepper mounts up on the frame so that we can line up our linear rails because we're going to need the linear rail up there so we can start assembling the x-axis. <music>